And here you are in your car, really? Yeah. yeah. In your car. I have a, a stool to many tonight. So what are you doing tonight? Taking a layer to class? Aaliyah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fixing my silly little thing. I think I broke this. Ah, uh, you, you know. know hold on, Susie. Let me get. Let me get another tripod. Take your time. Take your time. Hey, Angie. Hey, Ryan. Who else joined? DRS nineteen sixty nine. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all good. What? What? Jamie Jamie is going live with Sarah Jake. Dang it. <laughs> we all at the Rose House, that's a break. <laughs> Susie's running the show. Hi, uh, Sean. Hi, Yuko. Okay, let me sit down to do this. So I'm sitting down tonight. To talk to you. Hi, Yoko. Yes, you have to. You got to sit down because I'm in the car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not standing up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're not standing up tonight. So I, 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 the reason why I said, you know what, when you came back from your, what do you call it, your siesta? My sabbatical. My sabbatical. <laughs> I mean, it was My a sabbatical. <laughs> it was a sabbatical, all right. Yes. But but I called it I called it a siesta. What's a siesta? <laughs> a rest. Yes, yes, it so, is. And then you said it was a sabbatical. Yes. But let me turn this a bit. Siesta, sabbatical, it is. It's it's you know, it's really yeah. taking time to fill your soul. You know, and you know, so many people give from an empty space and they wonder why <laughs> they're frustrated. Why yeah. they're stressed. Yeah. Why, why they can't find peace. Why they don't have rest. It's because they don't take their rest. They don't take their breaks. They feel like they need to constantly be going, going, going. And you know what I found about that is? Because they're avoiding. They're, evo they're avoiding emotions that are going to come up when you take rest. When you take time and, and sit and do absolutely nothing, emotions that you have not dealt with are going to come to the surface. Of course it will. But I have a philosophy. I do. I have, I have rest. My rest is like all day Saturday or after that show on Sunday. I do absolutely nothing. Right. I, That's okay. I wonder, and especially in the summer, I will, I sit for hours and I just think. But that is a regular thing for me because I have, I prepare in the morning for the morning blessing, but I'm up at five. So because I'm that, by the time 12 o'clock comes, uh, my day is done. I've done a, everything in seven right. hours. I'm done, right? Right, right. <laughs> and that, you know, like when at the, the, the Movement Makers meeting today, like I really do have to get my schedule, like my weekly routine. Like I have my morning routine, but I really do need my, you know, my daily, what I'm doing, how he, you know, how he has his time schedule yeah. and then my weekly and getting that stuff organized because, I do. I have no problem with taking my rest. If I need rest, I'm going to take my rest because I realize the importance of that and how it, it, it helps me to be more creative in, in, in my service. It helps me to help other people. So yeah. that's why I take yeah. rest. And so many people are, are frustrated and stressed and, and angry and, and all this other stuff because they're pouring from an empty cup, and but, you but can't do that. When you came back from your sabbatical, I immediately noticed a difference in you. <laughs> That's what I want to really delve into tonight. I want to get into the root of it, because yeah, it, it's a transformation, and I, 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 I'm, I'm an intuitive in the sense that I listen, I pray, and I do all of these things. With a hi, guys. Everybody welcome. And one of the things that I wanted for sure to find too, I found out when you said you were on this sabbatical and you were very determined before you left that you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. And 
when you, and I missed you because I'm always looking at what you do and we do know that. And when you came back, I saw a difference on your face. Oh, wow. Thank you. I, I saw it, a more rest, restful face, mm -hmm. a, a camera, to a point that you look like you had even lost, lost some of your color. <laughs> um, honestly, it looks like, looked like you had gone on uh, somewhere and at a spa. <laughs> that, was the, that was the first appearance when I saw you, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I looked a little bit further, I said, okay, her, her attitude is completely different. So there was something happening. So when I asked you to come on the live, and we chose Thursday, and that was on Tuesday when you last talked, and you said, oh, it's going to be transformational Thursday. And I'm saying to myself, she doesn't know what I'm going to talk to her about, but I know she, she's an intuitive. So I figure somehow she got the vibe that I was going to go there and <laughs> to go for the transformation. Mm -hmm. You did a number of things. And as you know, I am not one that goes after people's link, link you know, whatever, the stuff on your link and your bio. I never, I don't, I never go there. Mm -hmm. I try to go at the back and to find out what that person is outside of what is on the front. Mm -hmm. And then, so I found out by observation with you that we have some alignments because I do, I do understand the, the, the um, energy of crystals and stones mm -hmm. and the, intuiti the intuitiveness of yeah. listening to guidance from within. Yeah. And a lot of that I follow religiously without bending it yeah. you you had that. So when you came back and I saw that transformation on you, um, it, it honestly, it showed right through the camera. And that is not something that people with somebody will notice, but I noticed it. And I wanted to, to you to tell me what it was. There's more, but I want you to tell me what it, what it was you did that made such a difference. Don't think uh, <laughs> about yourself, your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. That's what I'm interested in finding. Because as you said, when you first came on, many people know they need a rest, but they cannot stop from doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and they continue and they don't rest. So somebody would say that about me, but I rest, I take a lot of rest. I you got to. What I want. Because other than this, I'm really preparing my meals. I do nothing else. Right. There's somebody to do this, all the other things we should do. So tell me, what was that big transformation that caused you to come back, and in my eye, a renewed woman. Mm -hmm. well, well, I appreciate that um, because you know I don't I don't see that on myself. Um, I know that whenever I take time to myself, and whenever I just like kind of shut out the world. Like I don't really shut out the world, but I shut out the social media world because I think a lot of times we can get so wrapped up and so caught up in social media. And you know all the all the hype and all the likes and all the the followers that we disconnect from ourselves. So I really do it to disconnect. I mean, you know, to disconnect from everyone else on social media and go back and connect with myself because a lot of times we can find ourselves in comparison mode. We can find ourselves, you know, these emotions will start to surface. You know, and we have no idea where they're coming from. It's because we're connecting more with a lot of the superficial stuff and we're not connecting more with ourselves. So, so what, I, what drove you to make that decision? I do it all the time. This is my lifestyle. I, I live this. And, you know, a lot of people in my life have not understood that, but it's, it's really a refueling time for me. It always has been because I don't like to get you know, like my, my, I have this video that just took off on TikTok and it was like out of nowhere. And I was like, what in the world? You know, and it was like, when you have all these followers, when you have all these people praising you, sometimes it can take an effect on you, you know? And I tell God all the time, keep me humble. Keep me humble because I don't ever want money or success to change who I am at the core and sometimes I can find myself getting out of tune with myself 
because I'm more involved in social media. So I have to take breaks and take step back to really connect with myself and all that I am to not get that, that you to not be so much an ego. Cause I recognize that yes, you need the ego to have the confidence, to have the courage, because you're going to have your naysayers. You're going to have the haters. You're going to have those people who will come because they, because they don't like your light, because they don't like your power for whatever reason. And you have to remain, str you have to remain strong in your power and not come out of who you are and react. You, like you said before, you know, you can't have them draw you out of your power. And so it's very important for you to spend that time connecting to yourself, strengthening yourself, and to re remain humble with yourself, knowing that at any moment, it really could just all not be here. So just appreciate it while you're in it and not, not, t not focus on it so much, you know, but just appreciate it while you, ha you know, while you have it. It's just like the people in our lives appreciate the people in you in your lives while you have them because they might not be here you know and i think a lot of time we we, re, we take that for granted we take our we take people for granted and we take the blessing of being on this platform and teaching others you know that they too can come out of their dark spaces that they too can live a happy successful and thriving life but it takes a lot of work it takes okay. a lot of work so, so give me, we have all these followers from both of our team here tonight. So give us an, a, a, a day of sabbatical. What you did on a day when you were on your sabbatical. Okay. What? So what a day looks like from, for me. From the time you woke up. Okay. So when I wake up, you know, nothing really changes. Like I said, this is my lifestyle. So when I wake up, I do my morning prayer and meditation. Now, that has been changing because, of course, it's springtime, right? So the weather is nice. And I have a beautiful patio that sits in the woods. So I like to go outside and connect with nature because we are a part of nature. You know, God says that he created us in his image. And, well, the lakes are God. The rivers are God. The mountains are God. Nature is God. That's who we are. And the less that we disconnect from that, the less disconnected we are from ourselves. We have to go out and sit in nature. We have to go out and touch nature be to remember really fully who we are at the core because we get lost in this human shell. We get lost with all the, you know, the fancy stuff, all the, the bright lights and we get lost. We lose ourselves in that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with us having, you know, the, the, the pleasantries of life, but we must not forget who we are at the core and at the core, we are love. And, and we've, we've forgotten that. So really me taking these sabbaticals is really just to get back to myself, get back to love. So, so I get up in the morning, I do my morning meditation. So that's about 20 minutes. And then I'll eat me breakfast. So on my sabbatical, I was eating nothing but fruits blueberries raspberries strawberries pomegranates and i was putting mangoes in it and the coconut water and i was eating that for breakfast and then i was just having nothing but like salads for like dinner and lunch so i really was taking on a more i don't like to label it but vegan vegetarian lifestyle i was really only and um so i would do that and then i would go and and do my work so about 10 o'clock, I would do my podcasting, recording. So what I do is that's a dual thing. So I record for YouTube and I record for my podcast. So I would do that. And then, you know, just really taking spending time in nature. I kayak. I sit on my porch. I, um, we went on vacation, you know, doing the things that fill my soul. Because a lot of the times we get caught up. And then this, this runaround, you know, thinking that we constantly got to produce, produce, produce to take time for ourselves. So really going on sabbatical is really just taking time for yourself, doing time with yourself, you know, because I don't have a significant to learn how to, to travel and enjoy your own company before you can actually do that with someone else. So that's what I do. I just that fulfill my soul. 
what is that tap dancing that's being in nature that's uh, and acting goofy you know like i mean i i just do the things that make me laugh the, the things that fulfill my soul and i and then time with my daughter we we did we watched a movie you know we watched a couple movies we watched on um my birthday was on my sabbatical so i just you know i just enjoyed my show so what okay so one of the things one one of the things i i i noticed is that and you are but that's okay i think it's because you're in the car so but you you be it will be all right um when when you talked about your your time away when you came back one of the things i i i saw you do you actually said you collected some new assistant what is it like working with uh, somebody that looks after your email or your dms Maybe. and all that can you hear me now yes you are going away again i cannot hear you suzy Yes. Yes, oh my goodness. So, I you know what? I'm I may... Can you hear me? I can hear you now. But you can keep going in and out. Oh. Hmm. You keep disappearing. Okay, that's better. That's better. right there right that better okay, yeah it looks like it for now uh, are okay, am i here now or no yes you are here you know we let's see okay are you freezing again you are frozen <laughs> Can you hear me now? You keep going in and out. <laughs> you keep disappearing and coming back. Okay, so I'll just continue. Hear me? I don't know. Um it seems fine on my end. I don't know. But um um What what was you going to What was you saying? I can hear you now. I'm keep still talking. Frozen. Look, we have to get on. When I when I asked you when I asked you, I said to you, um, you came back and you had assistants and coach and people with oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, my assistant. So I was just like, you know what? Social media is not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I know I have to be on there to make the impact that I desire. I or to to have. Social media really is not my favorite thing because I can get caught up on it and I have other things that I enjoy doing. Yes, I know that oh, you know, I can You're frozen again. More discipline, <laughs> but you know what? There's tasks that you don't that you don't enjoy doing and get or you know hire somebody. She my videos I still make all my videos and I just send them over to her to post you know um for her to post them so and she's been creating like I send her over my quotes and then she's doing like my like she's been creating all the new quotes and stuff like that so it really is like taking a lot of the the extra things off like me spending time trying to create the quotes and stuff like that and getting her in it really has been a huge weight off of my shoulder so I would highly recommend like anything that you really don't enjoy doing that you feel takes a lot of your energy away because that is your creative space and you can you can give those menial tasks to you know your assistant and then you can work on the things that make you more creative you know so I go I, I still come on every now and again and I'll you know comment and like and stuff like that He's even going and and liking, you know, um following people who are mental health and 
you know, narcissistic abuse and PTSD. She's following those people for me and um, sending my video and telling them about my, you know, my, my community and stuff like that. So it really is just really an extension of me. It's like an extra hand. Um, and, and that really does take a lot of the stress off. So, you know, you, you have to, you have to learn how to um, add people to your team. That's really important, but you know, to be mindful and aware and observant and know that you can trust those people too, you know, because we all need the extra hands, you know, we can't do it by ourselves. You know, we, we get to a certain point and it's like, you know what, if, if I can, if I can afford to pay someone to, to take this off of my hands and, and me be in this space that Tessa Marie says, I mean, well, I feel it. I feel that I'm, I'm elevating uh, my vibration is right. It's a good place to be in because that's a creative space. That's where the map is. That's where you're in alignment with the universe and the universe is just like your stuff is just manifesting fastly. It's, it, it's coming, it's coming faster than you could have ever imagined. And you got to learn how to rest. So you got to learn how to listen to intuitive guidance because we all have it. Men included men can tap into it when they tap into that feminine energy that's within themselves, right? But they fight that energy. They fight that, that energy so much <laughs> that they don't want to tap into it because, you know, a lot of old, you know, when they were younger, that, that makes you, you know, when you cry and, and, and are vulnerable and are emotional, then, you know, you're a fag, you're a punk, you're gay. But no, that's just you feminine energy and getting that balance. You have to have have the balance between both of those integrate fully and completely in your authentic light. So yeah, that was a huge blessing for me. I, I, I'm going to see, take a break and see if we have any questions or any statements that I want to, I want to have you address because the, the transformation from you, I, I, I told you that a hundred times already is one of the things I really, really like to, to see coming out of you. Uh, so what, thank you. What I appreciate doing that. that. I'm going to ask you. Like, it's kind of like the Moses moment, you know, when Moses went on the mountain and spent time with God. That's that's how I see it, and God me black back with a glow. <laughs> I know, I know what you're saying. One of the things I I want you, what I want to make sure I ask you to tell me is, when you're creative, tell me the root of your creative energy from the body standpoint. A lot of people don't realize that when you're creative, for you to be very creative, you need to find the root. And the root is, is where? You, you know we deal with our chakras, right? And some people don't understand the chakras. But when, where does your, your creative energy come from? I want to see if you can I, I believe it's I believe it's the sacral. The sacral or the it's, solar, solar plexus. It's one of those two. It's, it's that yellow or that orange space. I'm, I think it's the sacral is your creative energy orange. is the sacred space from the orange one do you actually yeah. feel the sensation and the when you are going to create when you're writing or when you're starting do you feel it in that in that chakra yeah. because you, yeah. it's, okay. it's, i don't know i don't i really don't even know how to describe it but it's like a fire it really and truly is like it's like it's very passionate like i don't even really know how to well, I'm, I guess because it's so close to, because I think the sacral is actually your sexual energy too. So it's more like, it's more like doing. So when you're having good lovemaking, um, that's exactly what the, the sacral chakra does for you. When you that create it, because I've, yes. I've said this before, I was like, you know, if what you're doing does not make you want to jump out of your body and make passionate love to it okay you're doing something wrong you're supposed to be doing because when you're in, in that crate creators or i call it my zone like like it's amazing how much inspiration you have i find myself driving and needing to put on my recorder because i'm getting all this all of these downloads all of this information and this is really great spot to be in it really and truly is because you're not focused on the naysayers you're not focused on what's right you're not focused on what you don't have you're just pouring 
all made of. And it's a, it's a beautiful okay, so thing. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I asked that. Um, those of you who know Robert Burns, right? Robert Burns really wasn't a, a writer. And yet, he became a writer when he was jilted in love. And in one of his writings, he talks about replacing that feeling with the creative. Um, yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing. <laughs> he, yeah, that's why he wrote so many love things, is because he went searching. But that is the creative center. Oh, okay. That chakra. And the third chakra is the one of determination and resilience, and it's where you stick, where you stay on course. So they need to be balanced, as you know. But I wanted that to hear that because yes. um, personally, I have always known that's where the creative energy is. And, and, and when you're really in your zone, that's where you're going to experience that sensation that brings out the true writing, the creative act of you, because that's where it lies. And us in Western culture, we're afraid of it. Or I should say the, the, the new world is afraid to, to, to connect yourself. To, to do the best that they do. And it's not only for the creatives. Whatever it is you're good at, you need to connect and balance yourself from that point and all the way to the top of your head. So I just wanted to know yeah. because I realized from what you, what you wrote and how you wrote, I said there's more to that woman's writing than meets the eye. So that's what I wanted to ask you whether you found that you could go that deep and when you are there, you're in a zone that nobody understands. Even sometimes it frightens you. It weakens you like Robert Bush says. So, and Shakespeare talked about it too. So tell me, because you use, the, the words you use, you use such words that are so descriptive. And, and, and you are very, you're very strong on it. Somebody who doesn't, who hasn't studied you would think you're harsh. What it is that brings out that passion? <laughs> I do get, you know, that you're judgmental, but here's what it is. Here's what it is. I'm triggering you. I'm triggering you to heal. You think it's harsh. You think it's judgmental because there's something in you about what I said that still needs healing. I came here to trigger and that's my light. My light is healing. It heals. And so when I write, I'm writing to help others heal, mainly the divine masculine now it's the divine masculine in all of us because we all share those polarities so when we have been wounded i was wounded by my divine masculine um and so i in that space you know and hated, hated that and hated the divine masculine. So I had to go and love myself to go and love all of me, the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And so where I'm wounded, masculine, because was wounded within me. I didn't have my mother. I didn't have my father. They don't have a mother. They don't have a father. That's why I resonate with a lot of men. And so, and I haven't always known this and coming off of this sabbatical, God is just showing me more and more this is your space this that you get the hearts of the divine masculine in all of us so right, right from the wounds of the divine masculine, and that's where i'm writing from the wounds of my divine masculine the divine masculine doesn't like to cry the divine masculine does not show emotion so how do you get them to do that because i'm because when when a woman is in her power when a woman is in her power, she has the power to open up the heart of a divine masculine. See, a lot of women think that their power is between their legs, but it's not. The power is hidden in your own vulnerability, your own willingness to pour out your soul, to be open in your feelings. Because men don't know this because their own mother was not open with her feelings. A lot of men's mothers were not open with their feelings. So how can they how can they trust that? They can't, right? They can't trust that 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 what I speak is true. They can't say trust that because they're they haven't opened it up for themselves. So when we recognize our power, we can speak to the heart of that wounded little boy, of that wounded 
masculine and 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 that's how I write. That's the space that I write from. So when you have the character of the male in your writing, why don't you draw him out and make him softer? <laughs> um because my divine masculine is he 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 is assertive. He is dominant. But he's all loving because he understands that assertiveness is not abuse and dominance is not disrespect. It's love. It's coming from a space of love. And when you do that, you you really do you really do prompt the the men to really look at their hearts, to really look into themselves. Well, you know, the ones that I was called to, because I'm not called to every man. And that's why I ended up in a lot of relationships. You know, I, 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 I saw the potential in them, you know, but they didn't, they didn't, they never saw their own worth. So no, it doesn't matter if I saw worth, if they never saw their worth, then what I said would never be true to them. What I said, they would never believe. They would never believe that they were amazing and intelligent and sexy and handsome and a king, that they are a king side of there, that that little boy is just wounded. He's hurt. He's hurt from his mother and his father not giving him the proper love, nurturing, and guidance. You know, and so he, he finds a one like that and she does it and it scares the shit out of him. Because he, he doesn't, he has never felt that. Be, he's never felt that before. So I'm writing to him, reassuring him that you are enough, that you are enough. But you got to believe it for yourself. Baby. You got to believe it for yourself because, you know, and what I'm, I'm writing from the perspective of the divine. This is how the divine loves you. This is how God, the creator, loves you. You are the apple of his eye. You are magnificent. You are intelligent. Do you know you bring more to the table than your penis and your money? Do you know that you add so much value in your intellect, in your heart? When you are centered in your own heart and you are vulnerable in your own heart, do you know what of a blessing that is to a woman? I don't think that you realize your own value. And most men don't realize they never spoke to them like that. Their mother never spoke to them with love. Let, Hell, their father never wanted to be in their life. Let me tell you something about that. It's funny that I have a story because I have a story. I always have a story. You <laughs> but this is me. my story and my 10 months <laughs> and my son. So I was going to ask you, I'll tell you the story first, but my, ask, my question was going to ask you, when should it start? And then before I could bring it out, I, I, I knew the answer. Something said to me, but you know the answer. So I'll tell you the story and I want to see what you think of it. So there was a period where I needed to take my son into, when he was 10 months old to a nursery. Because um, at that time I had my ceramic business and I needed to go to New York for, for a conference and stuff. So anyway, I had to go to nursery. I wanted to get accustomed to going there. So I took him one day and a few days when I came in the third day, the woman said to me that he was a bad boy and he was not behaving, he was not sleeping. He's 10 months, he was walking, he stood up and walked at 10 months and he never looked back and he never took naps. So she didn't like that because he was, so she told me he was a bad boy and he, and he kept everybody Three else away. Running around. And right there, right there and then, I said to myself, if I have to take him to New York in a duffel bag, he's not staying here. I have the worst singing voice ever. <laughs> so I went, I took him and I started calling him. Everybody in my family has three first names before their last name. So I, I call out all of his names and I'm singing this song to him and telling him, you're a handsome boy, you're a wonderful boy, you're a smart boy. I am just loading him up with all of these phrases. And I, and I did in the car, and I had tears running down my eyes. I said, you're not going to tell, tell him that he's bad. And I cried all the way home. It wasn't that far. Right. I had to go for the rest of the week, but I was walking in there and talking, talking to him like that. And I never, ever stopped talking to my children like that. But I remember I had to reinforce he was loved, you're special, you're brilliant, you're bright, you're handsome. And you know, the cocky thing is still alive today, and he really thinks he's that's me out because I made him believe he was like that. 
So I wanted to, I was going to ask you when should that, when should a mother or father start instilling these beliefs into these children head, both girls and boys? When should they? What is your belief? I started at 10 months with Michael, but I did it while they were in my stomach also. I played music and had the thing on my journey pregnancy. But then I remember doing right. that particularly. So when would you recommend that? I mean, I don't, I don't think there should be any kind of separation. Just love your children equally. You know, they both deserve affirmations. They both to, deserve to know that they are worthy and deserve. No, when, and you should I start think. that early. I totally agree with um, while in your stomach, because I did the same thing with my son. Like I read um, while, while he was in my stomach books, the same thing I did with my daughter. I played music you know, around them and, and spoke positive things over them while they were in my womb. So yes, definitely as early as in the womb, but when they come out, don't, don't change that. You know, boys deserve to have their feminine nurtured just like you would do a, 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 a little girl, you know, and we tend to nurture the little girls a little bit more than we do the little boys because we want our little boys to be hard and masculine. Well, him being in tune with his feminine energy does not make him less less of a man. It actually makes him more of a man because then he can actually connect with women and not in abusive ways and not trying to connect with them sexually only. He can, he can have his heart open and connect with her emotionally. It doesn't make him less of a man. It makes him a stronger man. If you, when you can be in touch with your emotions, nobody can control them. Nobody can control your emotions. When you're in touch with your own emotions, nobody can control you. And that's beautiful because so, nobody should have power over you because you are a powerful, loving, spiritual being all on your own. We just kill other people. That's it. Nobody should have control in a relationship. You know, we, we are working this thing together. We're loving each other together. We're growing together. And because... You know, mothers told sons that if you cry, then your men don't want to cry because that make, they think that that makes them less than a man. They don't want to be vulnerable and say, you know, today I'm not having a good day or, you know, I was frustrated because their mother told them to stop complaining or, you know, like they didn't want to hear about their problems. And we're, we're all human. We all, we all have stuff that we're dealing with, you know, and it, it make him less of a man. So don't. Don't punish him for for his emotions. He's allowed to have those emotions, just like a woman. I, I like that idea. Um, I've been asking to to be humble and a humble man. It has led to a lot of what she's talking about. That is what Ryan. I've been asking to be humble and ma and man. It it has led to a lot of what she's talking about. Ryan, that said, that is somebody I coached for years. Um. And Ryan is the person that caused me to create the five pillars of prosperity. It was actually because of coaching Ryan, when he came, I realized what you're here for is not what you're really, that is not where it is. And I had to work with Ryan for a long time, but Ryan created, because me, I went from finance on him to the five pillars of prosperity. And it was really an amazing experience. So what he said there is really true. Um, where can we find your podcast? I will give that. Ryan, I'll send that to you. Um, in my, it's in the uh, link tree in my bio, too. I will tell you. You just click on the yeah, You just so click what, on my link. Um, let me see. Don't I just say, yeah. And we never saw Moses on TikTok doing craziness either. <laughs> well, you know, Donato, most, there was no, I didn't say I was in. I didn't say I there was no TikTok for Moses. But this is one thing about my relationship. This is one thing about my relationship with God. It's individual. And God loves me just as I am. And when I post those TikTok videos, God is laughing with me. God is cheering me on. And if I took on the opinions of others about what I'd be doing or what I shouldn't be doing. And God loves me just, just as I am. And God continues to pour his love into me and pour that light into me so that I can share it with others in the form of 
videos in the form of quotes however you know god sees fit to use me that's how i'll be used well god is not a respecter of persons so i he will t god gave us all the talent when moses was alive there was no tiktok but there were slaves and moses had two girlfriends so <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's right that's right Tess. you know what we all are unique and special individuals and we all have our different talents and we're all going to reach a different genre of people and that's my genre that's my genre i i i agree with you because the thing about it is that if we take the old testament it is the hardest if we really want to go there it's one of the hardest part of the of the bible and and there was no ceremony when Lot took Rachel to his tent and made her his wife. There was no priest or pastor there. He took her to the tent and he made her his wife. So I don't understand that. So Moses wasn't on, on um, TikTok because there was no TikTok. But Moses knelt in front of a burning bush, so I, I, I don't know. He must have been hot <laughs> somehow. <laughs> well, you know what? Um... God said that he will use those things to confound the wise. So, <laughs> that's so, you know, God but when it's that you know, and that's the problem. We put God in this box. Oh, God wouldn't do that. God, you know, like God will use the donkey. God, you donkey before. Okay. So, you know, don't, 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 don't make God into your image you are made in the image of God, okay? So you use your talents, your gifts, your creative ability to bless the people and to touch the hearts and the lives of the people that you're here to touch because everybody is not going to get you, and that's okay. And for the longest, I expected people, everybody to accept my energy, accept my vibe, but I know now today, I'm not for everybody. And hallelujah to that, because that's a heavy ass weight to be on somebody's shoulders. And I don't want to be here for everybody. I just want to be here for that select few that says, you know what? She gets me. She understands me because she's been through it. And that's, that's all I'm here for. I'm not here to impress nobody, nobody. I'm here to inspire people to be their authentic, unique and beautiful self that's it and I agree. that's i agree i agree with you on that susie because i i am a little bit more eccentric than you i will almost wear anything i want i'll say what i want <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> and, what, and what i don't want to do i believe you should hire somebody to do it yes mother told me housework was the most boring job in the world and she said, when they thought it wasn't boring enough, they went and in invented the vacuum cleaner, which makes it noisy. You know, you cannot even think. Right. So my recommendation is go find a job and hire somebody who likes cleaning yeah. house. Clean I house. said, I said, my next, my next hire is you. My, uh, my finance. I need my financial coach. <laughs> no, but you, you see, that you next on my list. <laughs> I, I wanted very much to have this conversation with you since you came back because of the uh, of what I said at the beginning. I saw a huge change. I like the attitude that you have now that you cannot please everyone. And if we try to please everyone, we're going to end up being in a, a bigger yes. mess. It's a hell of a load to carry. Yes, and you you are on, when you are on this trajectory and you're heading in the direction that you want to go, along the line, you're going to meet people and you maybe do things you want to do and people wouldn't like it. So you have to be strong if you want to be on social media. You have to be strong if you want to stand out. Yes. You have to know yourself and if you want to inspire others to know themselves. Absolutely. So I, I really enjoyed having you here tonight. I really, Absolutely. I, I had a little bit of stuff, but you know what? All I want is for you to continue because I love what you do and how you inspire I still want to see if you can make a man cry. <laughs> and so, you said what? I, I said, I said, if you can make a man cry. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not really focused I, I on that. To, if he does, he does. On the show that, that feels it. And, and that will come out and say, wow, I really felt what I was looking for. And 
and you touched on the, the masculine part of the feminine part of a man uh, of a woman in a man and then you said there was the same thing in us and a lot of people don't see that and they a lot of people yeah. you're different with that you're aggressive woman but they don't see that is your your strength and your did your masculine that part of you that is showing through and you, you we cannot always be soft and cushy because that that needs to hurt really so so we well, have when to you be... have when you when you when you practice balance in your energies see yes when i'm doing when i'm doing my job my career that masculine energy a lot of the times but i know how to be feminine i know how to be a feminine woman with my man i have no problem with that i communicate i you know like I, i'm me everything that you see is me and guess what there is a man who loves that <laughs> There is a man who loves that, you know, so I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about what anybody else thinks because I know who I am. I'm secure in who I am. I'm confident in who I am. And people are going to have their opinions. People are going to talk. Let them. You're not doing anything if they're not talking. People are going to talk whether you're doing bad or good. So I might as well give them something to talk about. I might as well because what happens is when they talk about me, God blesses me. So keep talking. Please, I want you to talk about me. <laughs> God gonna continue to bless me. You well, all I can say is keep keep doing what you're doing because obviously it has put you in a position where you're, it makes your life a lot easier. You're enjoying it and you're having fun with it, and, okay. and that's what life is all about. If you cannot yeah. have fun that's or you don't thing. enjoy, yeah, thing, then you should and find something yeah. else. Yeah. You know, so I it, it's, it was a pleasure having you here tonight. I love the transformation you too. Of the yeah. that you got. Miss Johnson, I, you go. And, you, and anytime you want. Yeah. Yeah. I love your wisdom. So any, I, if anybody had anything to say that we didn't like. <laughs> so your whole section missed you when you were <laughs> there. <Taran> showed up. <laughs> so we all missed you because it was having you around. Thanks, Angela and Corinne and Patrick and, and Ryan. And give Ryan that connection. And 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 Donato, yes, we will join you one day to tell you off, but that's okay. Um and <laughs> everyone excuse me. I, I need to tell them off. I sent it to that stuff. <laughs> no, we didn't Let we had a lovely group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and and I I glad that Ryan joined us. I hope Ryan keeps coming because he's always very very he has so much to say and he's a very amazing human being. Um, life after divorce was here. That time was when Belinda came and Christina was there, and everybody came. So we had a really good group tonight. Thank so thank y'all for coming. And Dawn I came from, from Knoxville. So we'll do that again another time when 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 you want to chat. I I, I know yes. you have. Is. And I'm sorry that you took time away from Aaliyah to be with me tonight. Uh, Aaliyah's, in dance. Aaliyah's in dance. That's why I agreed to do it. She in dance. She don't. She about to get out at seven forty-five. Okay, so you just have ten minutes. That's good. So thank you so much. And if you have any lasting words to say, since you have ten minutes, let's hear it. You're yeah. freezing again. But yeah, we can. You know, I, I, you, I love talking to you. You always. Um, take care of yourself, love yourself. I know you guys so build your businesses and, and, and be of service, but you really do have to take care of yourself to give the most, like to give in abundance. When you're taking care of yourself, it flows effortlessly. It's not a job. It's something you love to do. Um, so if you find yourself, uh, looking at what you're doing like a job and it's 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 becoming overwhelming take a step back take a step back go center yourself go love yourself and then start pouring out again it's very important for you to take time for other people thank That's you Susie that was great I really enjoyed that and we will see you again soon so tell Ale a good night for me and have yeah, a wonderful I'll night I'll see you dancing somewhere tomorrow, somehow, somewhere. I know I yeah, don't know. So, so, Y'all see something. Yeah. <laughs> well, buddy Dawn and Angela and everybody, so many, Belinda yeah, and Christina. Thank you, 
Ian and Donato, Rosanna, and all of those. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the morning. All right, yes, you will. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.